Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield with Building San Francisco, and we have a special program of Stay Safe today, where we're going to talk about what you can do to your home after an earthquake to make it waterproof and to be more comfortable. We're here at Spur in San Francisco, this wonderful exhibit of Safe Enough to Stay, and uh, this is an example of what your home might be like after an earthquake. And we have today with us Ben Latimeric from T-Van. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, good and, to see you uh, again. And we're gonna talk about things that you might do that you don't have to be a professional contractor to do to make your home more livable after an earthquake. Right, I wanna talk about things that any homeowner could basically do with a few little tricks I have in my creative fun here. We have the comfort and then we have things like a little bit of maybe safety if your front door is, is ajar and waterproofing if you have a leak in your roof or if you have broken glass on the window. So one of the most important issues is keeping outside out and the inside in. So let's look at windows for a second. So Lawrence, let's assume that this window was broken in the earthquake. We have wind and rain, it's, it's blowing in. Um, one of the most important things that you need to do as a homeowner is secure the plastic properly. If you just take staples or nails and put them into the plastic, we're gonna get a strong wind, and it's gonna rip it right off. What I'm gonna have it, what I'm gonna have somebody do is they're gonna have, this is an old piece of shingle, you might have, Piece. Everybody's got a piece of wood in their basement. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. You take out your trusty screw gun, and hopefully you have one of these. Or you're there's gonna, one at the, uh, one at the one neighborhood at support center. At the neighborhood center. support That's center. Right. You're going to wrap this you. plastic around this board, take your screw, and then screw that in. Do you need a permit for this? You do need a permit for this. <laughs> and no, no permit, no permit required. And you can contact the former head building inspector to get that permit. And that's it. And so that way now when the wind blows, tight. it's tight and it's not going to pull through it, it, having a single point of contact. Great. What about this door? Take a look at this door. What can we do? Let's say it doesn't shut tight. What Let's would say we do? it doesn't shut tight and we're going to assume for sake of argument we're on the inside. Okay. okay. I can't lock my door at night. I have a very similar... Very similar idea. I'm simply going to take my 2x4, I can put it across the jam and the door. One. Two. Maybe I want another one up here, maybe another one down there, but I can go to sleep. And that quickly I can get it off in the morning. Terrific. Okay, what about the roof up here? We, we see people throw blue tar, tarps over their roof after an earthquake. That seems reasonable. I think the blue tarp is reasonable. The things that people want to know, that they need to know, is if you have multiple tarps, how you overlap, starting from the bottom and moving up so that you're overlapping this way, so rain running down doesn't slide under your tarp. Right. And then the same technique we did over here, as silly as it may sound, wrapping the end of that blue tarp with your board and then securing that if you can underneath, if you have to on top is fine, but making sure that you don't have an area where the wind is going to get under and billow that tarp. So the That's wind could just rip that It'll thing just rip right it off. right off and then you're back up there again. Okay, let's go inside and check out what we can do inside. All right, crate of fun. Here we go. Crate of fun. So Ben, I see you have man's universal tool here. Absolutely, right here. Man's best friend, duct tape. Uh, let me show you a couple things we can use this for after an earthquake. This window right here, because it's off kilter, we have open seams all along all four edges, and I have a lot of air coming through. So I want to stay comfortable at night. I want to, I want to keep that air out. It's as simple as that, all the way around. Excellent. Excellent. And now I don't have any air coming in. Let's say this one is one that would annoy me. Everything's a little off. My doors won't stay closed. I take a simple little piece of my favorite duct tape here, close it up and at least it'll stay out of my way when I'm trying to live through the, throughout my day. Um, if, we, if we're not talking about pressurized water, we're talking about just the drain, sometimes they're gonna get a crack right, here, right, sure. and you're gonna get a leak. Duct tape around that is gonna help us get through until when we can get a plumber out and get that fixed as well. Um, let's say we only have electricity in one room, so we're running extension cords across, across the house. If I'm gonna run an extension cord from one room to the other, I don't want kids tripping on it, I don't wanna trip on it, I take my trusty duct tape, 
I tape it to the floor and I don't have to worry about it getting kicked. Great, great. Um, well, look at this. Let's look at uh, ah, what this is here because we see yes. a big box yes. of broken glass in down the, there. In the event of an earthquake, I don't think we're going to have too many, too much debris that's safe to, to put into a plastic bag, even as, even as strong as it might be. So these are, these are called rice bags. This is what they use to put uh, to tr rice and things. Mm -hmm. And when they when they ship it, so this is something where I take my glass, I can take broken pieces of wood, I can take anything sharp, fill it, and I, it's not going to puncture and come out. It's not going to fall all over the floor. I'm not going to have it sticking out, maybe scratch myself, cut myself, or something right. like that. These are a great thing to have. So you got a little go-to box for emergencies. Go -to That's box. great, absolutely. Well, thanks very very much for joining us, Ben. It's really been interesting, and uh, I want to thank you all for joining us here at the Spur Urban Center. And uh, we'll see you again on Building San Francisco. Stay safe.